Hey, faith friends, it's Kathy Lamunion here with Bodybuilder Ministry. I hope that you are somehow staying warm and dry today because it is a rather cold and rainy day again, um, but that's okay. I am actually playing with a little Play-Doh right now. Just sitting here playing with a little Play-Doh. Been um, trying some new things today and doing some different things today. And I currently have a beautiful red bird peeking in the window at me. Really pretty. Okay, sorry, I got distracted for just a moment there. So, as I was saying, playing with a little Play-Doh today. Um, and I wanted to see if I could share something with you that I believe will fuel your faith. I believe it's going to challenge you, and I believe it's going to encourage you and build you up today. So, many of you know that for, for a long number of years in my life, I really seriously battled and struggled with many, many things that were not of God. Um, anxiety, depression, anger, loneliness, um, fear. As a general rule, fear, I guess you would say. But the thing that we're going to talk about today is depression. Um, I know that depression is real because I lived it, encountered it, experienced it for many, many years myself, was treated for it, all of those things. Um, coupled with anxiety, it can be crippling at times, and I do know that. Um, and so I am not coming against that in any way, shape, or form, okay? And I'm not a counselor or psychologist or psychiatrist or any of those things. I'm just sharing doesn't die, um, with you um, of what Jesus has done for me. And I believe that in sharing this with you, that you can be encouraged, okay, where you are today. I want you to be encouraged where you're at today, okay? So, I, when I was going through depression one time really, really bad, I remember hearing somebody say, and then I read it again later on, that um, if you rearrange the letters of depression, you can actually pull out the words, I pressed on. So, if you've never heard that before, I want to encourage you to write that down somewhere and ponder that, meditate on that, let that thing sink in. It didn't come from me. I don't take credit for it. I'm trying to, I don't remember who it was that said it, but it was really, really good. And it still is really, really good. But do you know that I wrote those words down and of course was praying and believing God that depression did not belong to me and it was not of him. And I did not, um, I knew that was not of his God's plan for my life. So, um, as I would see those words written, one day in prayer, I can remember saying to the Lord, because I am a Q&A girl. I love questions. I love to ask questions, and I inquire of the Lord a lot. His Word tells us that we can inquire of Him, and so I do. I ask Him a lot of questions, and I remember asking on this particular day, saying to Him, Lord, what is it I'm pressing on to? Yes, I pressed on. Depression doesn't belong to me. Yes, I don't want to be depressed anymore. What is it that I'm pressing on to? And I heard the Lord say, press on in. Press on in. Press on in. So for me to decide in my mind, I know I'm not supposed to be depressed. I know depression's not of God. I know it is not for me. I know I like to know all of those things is one thing. Um, and to hear it and, you know, the counseling and the, all the things and, and, and the coping and all of that stuff. Like I, all of those things I had done and was doing. But what, but that day, a difference happened in my life. I'm telling you, when I heard the Lord say that to me, press on in. So the reason I'm playing with Play-Doh right now is because I'm going to do what I believe is going to be a life-changing illustration for you. It was certainly was for me. Um, when we're anxious, many times we will wring our hands. We will grapple with circumstances and situations. We at times can be gripped with fear. When we um, are battling anxiety, we have where we're just doing this. Does any, can anybody relate to what I'm saying? Like you just, this is what's going on. Okay. 
been there, totally get it. It is real. Like I do not discount that at all. But what I want to show you right now is that it was not until I began to do what the Lord instructed me to do that day, which was press on in. Now, I am right now going to turn the camera around because, see, circumstances come, life comes, challenges come, and they are pushing, and they are pressing, and they are, they're, they'll they just absolutely press you and press you till you feel like you're just flattened out and there's nothing else you can do. So you have a choice to let that thing crush you, let that thing press you down, or to do what the Lord instructed me to do. Are you ready? I can show you this, okay? Right here, I have a cross. So when life has come and pressed me and pressed me and pressed me, if I make the choice, and it is my choice, to press on in, ha, ha glory to God, hallelujah, to Jesus, look what happens. My life begins to take an entirely different shape. And those circumstances and situations that I they looked impossible, felt impossible, seemed impossible, all of that. All of this you see that, that was easily cut off right here, that's flesh. That's, that's my flesh that needed to be crucified, if you will, needed to be removed, done away with. It didn't, I didn't need that. But the part of me, sorry, I'm doing this one-handed. The part of me, if I can push this out of here, is, that is left is in the shape of the cross. And I remember hearing the Lord say to me one time, you know, too many people in the body of Christ today, sorry, I keep dropping that, I'm going to sit down and hold it. Too many people in the body of Christ today are of the mindset that God is saying to us, shape up or ship out. You just need to shape up or ship out. No, 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 my love. That is not what God is saying to us at all. He is saying, shape up and ship out. Where does he want to ship us out to? The world. He wants us to go and to tell what it is that he's done for us. To tell, to share the gospel, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with the world. That's what he wants us to do. What shape is it that he wants us to go in? This one. This one. And do you know that everything that I ever have needed, everything I ever will need, always and forever and forever can be found in this. I don't need all the rest of that me that didn't fit, all that that was easily cut off. I didn't need any of that. But I had to make a choice to press in to Christ. What do I mean by that? Time alone with God. Not just crying out, not just reading, not just writing, not just um, quoting scripture, not just pleading the blood of Jesus, not just um, doing, going to church and being at every function and event and volunteering for everything and not just being with believers all the time, not just doing and doing and doing and going and my mouth just constantly go. No, 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 no. Time alone with God, okay? Intimacy. I am a word girl. I see the word time in that word. I heard a pastor say one time, into me, see, is what we're saying to God. So when we have intimacy with our Father, we want Him to look inside of us. But for me, personally, I see the word time in the middle of there. And so when I think about spending time alone, intimately with my Father, me sitting there, Close my eyes if I need to. Shh. Thoughts just shush. But pressing in to Jesus. Jesus, this is the example that he gave us, y'all. He went away. He went into the garden. He went away. He went to the other side. He went. There are many examples where he went away to pray. And I don't think that he was doing all the talking. Um, how else would he have known? He, he went where God said to go. He did what God said to do. He said what God said to say. He was quiet when the Father said to be quiet. He, did, he, he was just always in tune with the Father. And he said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So when we spend time alone with God, 
and we are just still and quiet, he will begin to pour in revelation. Give him your questions. Send, Write them out and ask them of him. Inquire of the Lord. He will answer you. I'm telling you right now, he will answer you. He is faithful. He is faithful. He hears our cries. They do not fall on deaf ears. He hears our cries, cries and he loves us. And the reason I suffered the way I did for so long, why, why, why? Everybody always wants to know why. Well, why is this and why is this? Well, the reason why is always the same. It's deception. We are deceived. And when we become deceived, the enemy can come in and he's the liar and the loser and that's all he does. And we're not going to give him any place or any, um, he doesn't get a trophy for doing that. Okay, we're not going to give him that. But I also want us to know that that is nothing more than a lie. We make it into this great big thing, and it is a big lie. But you know what? The, the bigger the lie, then that's okay. All we need is just more truth. We just need to pour truth in. And I love how the cross ends up being in the shape of a T. T for truth, right? Um, I love that so much. But I, I was thinking the other day, and I thought kind of that this was going to be a different, like, it teaching entirely, but I just feel the Lord really just stirring my heart with this right now. I saw the words somewhere that said, fear no more. And I thought, wow, that's powerful. But I remember a time in my life when seeing those words, I might have said, yeah, I'm not going to fear anymore. Today's the day. No more fear for me. Mm -mm. Ah, in the name of Jesus, no more fear for me. But I didn't believe that in my heart, apparently, because guess what? Fear still reigned and fear still ruled, even though I was saying something different. Why? Because I might have had encountered religion. I might have had religious acts and things like that going on. And I might have said out of my mouth, oh, it's not about religion. It's about relationship. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. And yeah, I said that a lot. But do you know that it wasn't even about relationship because the relationship that I had with the Lord for years and years and years was one in which I did all the talking. Anybody else? Can I get a witness? And so it wasn't until I started getting still and quiet and listening, the word open, praying, talking to the Holy Spirit and saying, you are my teacher and acknowledging all the things that he is. And the word of God became alive to me. And I began to be taught and the lies began to be exposed more and more and more. I would say, I would say wow, that's a lie. Wow, that's a lie. Wow, that's another lie. And what do we do to get rid of the lie? We pour in more truth. You got to put in more truth than you do lies. And so the lies have to be exposed, okay? And so that's a huge thing of what I'm about here at Bodybuilder Ministry is flipping lies and telling truth. And so we are telling the truth today. That's what we're talking about today is that when depression is a part of our lives, yes, you can grip a hold of the, the truth that I pressed on. You can flip it around. You can encourage yourself and build yourself up in that. But I'm telling you now, the thing that set me free was when I pressed on in to Jesus. He is ultimately the one. I um, can tell you all kind of things about counselors love counselors. I think they're the most amazing people, and I have such a um, respect for counselors. But I want to share with you something. The only counselor that I ever received counsel from that somehow or another I didn't come away either being told or being felt like that it was all my fault is the Holy Spirit. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, Prince of Peace. My counselor is the Spirit of the living God the Holy Spirit. He is my counselor, and in him I am found not guilty. Glory to his name. Praise the name of the Lord. So you today, my friend, are found not guilty. It's not your fault, okay? We've all been deceived. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. That's why we have a need for a Savior. So if this word has blessed you or encouraged you or built you up or challenged you in any way or you know anyone that could be, um, you know, encouraged by it, I want to invite you to feel free to share it, to like it, um, to pass it on, press it forward to someone that you know that could um, benefit from it and everything. So from Bodybuilder Ministry today, I want you to make the choice to glean what you can from this. Be encouraged by this. Know that the only reason that the Lord had me to share this today is because he loves you. 
He's willing to use people that are like me, which is very incredible, to get the word to you so that your heart can be encouraged. You're not alone. You are absolutely not alone. That is a lie. Do not believe that for a second. You're not alone. And there is always, always a way out. The Lord has always made us a way out, a way of escape because he's faithful. So we don't hold on to the lies. We hold on to the truth because a lie will pull you down. But the truth, the truth will bring you up. So pour in more truth today. Spend time with the truth today. His name is Jesus. Be quiet with the truth today. Listen to the truth today. And that truth today that I want you to take away from this is that you are loved.